Hello, Daniel Oszczenda. Szymon Gumułka. Welcome on our virtual exhibition. This week, every day, at the same time, at 11 o'clock in the morning, we invite you to join us to listen about our latest innovating automation technologies. So, today, welcome on our first meeting when we would like to introduce first topic is the condition monitoring. Is this common topic? Simon, what do you think? Yes, yes, I think so. I think so, but we have many different approaches because when we are talking about the condition monitoring, we can talk about the monitoring of the environment on our um, yeah. uh, place where we are working on, or we can talk also about the self-monitoring of our devices. Yeah, and we will present you today both approaches. We will try to talk about different technologies to help you to monitor and to use the technologies to make monitoring of the environment on your machine, part of your machine, how it behaves, to introduce this, uh, to help you to use the technologies to change behavior from the reaction maintenance, which is based as the name is uh, reaction after something is break, broken, it means you only react, your machine is stopped, and you lose your time, and time in current time, of course, is the money. And we all know how much does it cost the production stop. So, ch big challenge today is to switch from the reaction to prediction. Most of you doing partly in that direction, but in, quite often, if we are talking about this kind of maintenance, is done just preventive. It means also in, we sometimes invest unnecessary money, just replace the sensor or some part of the machine only based on some period of the time. It doesn't matter if the part is good or not. I think the most important, if you would like to also save the money, keep your machine running, to switch to predictive maintenance based on the real condition. And today, we will try to show you some technologies which definitely will help you. And if we are talking about the machine, currently, I think, Simon, we do not have machine without the power. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> so the electrical power so. is the basic of the running of any machine. Yeah. And we will use, as an example, we have a nice booth present based on the welding application with this big welding gun when we have different technologies. And as I said, the basic is the power. So let's start mm. from the power supplier. Yeah, definitely. That's the, the, the right approach because uh, when we lost the power, we lost everything. We lost the all information. We, we lost the possibilities of the production. We cannot produce um, uh, nothing. Um, so, uh, we know this is a very important element of each uh, automation installation. And a few years ago, we have prepared a special power supply uh, with auto diagnostic functions. Um, at this moment, we have uh, monitored about 45 different parameters of our power yeah. supply, a lot of, and uh, I think. Uh, which type of parameters? For example, the uh, maximum high temperature which we have in the past. It's no. very important because uh, the, the high temperature uh, can do something wrong with our components of our power supply. We can measure the, the voltage level, the current level, uh, the stress level of our, and, uh, of, of, of our uh, unit. And inside the power supply, we have the microcontroller who is collecting those information and is uh, monitoring it and recalculating and in effect we will get the information about the actual status of the uh, of the unit and in this example we have uh, two uh, different uh, approach how to show mm -hmm. this information the first one is uh, something like a visualization yeah? very easy and very very cheap visualization you mean we have this free LEDs which show the exactly. parameters yeah. which you said we have the stress level so yeah. how much currently we take uh, if we are not if we don't have overload for example of the power yeah i will add that normal situation is uh, when the, the current consumption is about 18% of of the, the power okay. supply possibilities is the normal situation mm -hmm. yeah 
Uh, Always to have some uh, safety margin on the power yes, supply. Yeah, yes, so the recommendation yes. is like this 80%. Yeah, it's better to have uh, something to, yeah, to yeah. use later. Yeah. And hmm, yeah, and uh, lifetime. Yeah, lifetime. Uh, I, I told you about the 80% because uh, you need uh, the power supply is still calculating the information about the temperature, about the current consumption, about the stress level, and uh, in the effect we got the information about the lifetime. What does that mean? If our power supply will uh, work in the normal uh, environment. That means mm -hmm. the temperature will be lower than 14 degrees, uh, the current consumption will be, will be lower than the 18%, then the lifetime of uh, the power supply is, for example, 12 years. Yeah? Okay. During these 12 years, we got the information, like a LED uh, light mm -hmm. will be green. Yeah. Yeah? If something will happen with um, the components inside the power supply, for example, our temperature in our environment is not 14 uh, degrees, it's the, the, the 16, 70 degrees because our environment and our application is, is, is like this. Then the time will be reduced, maybe for 7, maybe for 8. We, we don't know. We can monitor it continuously and recalculate this information. If something wrong will start happen with uh, our components, then we get the information. The light will switch color from green to the yellow. For us, is, it is the clear information. Hey, is something wrong with me? But it's not bad. I'm still working. I, if you have a time to do something with that. You can reduce parameters. Okay, can, so, mm -hmm. so it means I do not have to wait until the power supply Definitely. is broken. You cannot wait. You cannot okay, wait. but second the situation is also I do not have to replace every two years, for example, based on the preventive. Exactly. I have a clear information and based on the information out of my power supply, I know if I should replace it or not. So I do not waste my time and my money for unnecessary maintenance. I only re do replacement only when it's really needed. So this is a exactly. great example of the self-awareness of the devices, which really helps you keep your machine running over all time when you need it. If I'm right, this is IP67 uh, power exactly. supply, which is mounted outside. The same technology is available in IP20, so you can have the same functionality, I'm right? Exactly. In You're IP20, right. so you can mount it inside your cabinet and use it to, for different. So. Of course, and we had great application a few years ago when our customer used the IP67 version in their uh, transport uh, systems. And because it's the IP67, he doesn't need the electrical cabinet and uh, he can put and hide the uh, power supply somewhere in the machines. Uh, you can ask about the, how to monitor the actual status. And we have the solutions, we have uh, IOLink interface on board on this power supply also, so we can collect, send this information directly so, to the, our so PLC. Thanks to this small, small module yeah. and this cable, I have this uh, data available all time on my control system, so you can monitor in your PLC if everything is okay with your power supply or not, or set up some alarm using some display elements or something like that. Exactly. Generally, you are digitalizing information from the power supply. If you have digital information today, you can do everything. You can write the application, you can send, for example, using CMMS system, uh, SMS to your maintenance yeah. that something wrong happened with this and this and this element. Uh, what is also interesting, uh, if we are talking about the application of future, uh, you can monitor this information, a lot of information, and you can uh, teach, you can learn, and you can learn about your machines, about the yeah. behavior of your machines. You get very interesting information. Oh, about the digitalization and how we can get out the data out of our devices. We will talk more uh, during our IOLink session, which during the next days. But also today we will present you later some examples how to use the digital data to monitor, to display some values out of the devices. But when we are talking uh, about this uh, condition monitoring uh, and monitoring the, the, the machine. We started from the power supply, which is uh, self-awareness, high complicated devices with internal processor processing. 
But in such kind of applications, we have also very simple binary sensors like inductive switch which monitor part of the, this welding gun. And if we are talking about the condition monitoring, with such kind of simple sensor, if you have just pure switching PNP, normal open, close, whatever sensor, you don't know if this sensor is working correctly or not until something happens. So if their sensor is switching on or off, you know only if this is working or not. We have several solutions to go step further. Of course, we can use quite more advanced sensor direct with the IOLink interface when you have a lot of information about your sensor. But we have steps in the middle, like sensors with DESINA, which monitor, which you have additional signals, which give you the high state during if the sensor is running correct. And it helps you to monitor to know if the sensor is running or not. If you need some more additional information, you, you can have DSC function, so dynamic sensor control, which gives you additional information, not only if the sensor is running or not, but give you information if the distance, for example, to the target, if we have uh, inductive sensor is too close or too far. If it is too close, you have a really danger that if something really happens, the face of the sensor could be broken. And of course, if this happens, your machine will stop. And the same, if the distance is too high, it could happen that the target will be not correctly detected and also could make some stoppage on the machine. So starting from the even simple binary sensor, we could have monitoring of the environment. It, it could influence about the availability of your machine. So using the right technologies, thinking about the possible influence of simple sensor on your machine, you can do really condition monitoring. This is really, really important to use the right technologies. And I think in this example, we have also different technologies to monitor the awareness, the environment of this application, yeah? Exactly. Today we are living in the world when we have to connect different technologies. I'm thinking about connecting the hardware solutions with IT solutions and we have to digi digitalize some signals, but I am thinking also about connecting, for example, analog signals with some uh, digital interfaces, for example, and we have such solutions, yes? Here we have a flow sensor, temperature sensor, and the pressure sensor. And some of them are available, of course, with IO-Link interface, but some doesn't have such interface. Yeah. What we can do then, or what we can do if our customer has some old machine and he would like to do something with this machine to get more information about the condition monitoring, yeah, we are ready for that. And here I am thinking about the analog hub. It's very interesting um, solutions. Uh, thanks to you can, using only one cable, you can connect up to eight different devices. And uh, what is important, you don't have to decide uh, when you are ordering which type of devices would you like to uh, connect to this uh, unit, right, Daniel? Yeah, definitely. This IO model gives you possibility to connect all available analog type of signals. It means if this is voltage uh, input, current input, or directly to such kind of model, you can connect temperature sensors like PT100 or PT1000 or thermocouplers. So, and what is important, you can define this uh, not for the whole model, but for an, any single port, you can connect different type of technologies. So, Shimon, as you said, if we have old running machine and we have some existing sensors, it's not necessary to replace all of them, exactly. but you can do very easily retrofit to add different technologies using, as you said, pressure, temperature and flow, which are very important if we are talking about this kind of application to monitor if we have uh, enough cooling uh, water to, to cool down uh, this welding gun. So you can monitor with the pressure uh, sensor if the pressure is okay. If we have flow, we have flow sensor to monitor if still we have the right amount of the cooling uh, liquid running over our device. Yeah, And in that case, it could be 
quite simple uh, flow sensor. We don't need to measure exactly how much. It is enough to set up some threshold and to, to have the defined level, if this is okay or not. So from this kind of sensor, we have just switching input outputs. So this could be connected to our network model <coughs> as a digital signal. In case of temperature, in that example, to show capabilities our analog hub, we have analog signals. We have, in that case, two different uh, temperature sensors with different uh, part of the machine. And in that case, we can use analog hub to collect those signals. And we have, of course, the pressure sensor, in that case, with the IO-link signal. And by the way, in that sensor, Simon, it is fully configurable. Yeah, this is our latest exactly. sensor. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, it's the new concept of the uh, pressure sensor because in past you have to decide that which type of output do you like to use. Uh, binary output, analog output, which type of analog output or IO-link output. Today you order one sensor with uh, all possibilities. And uh, through the last years I'm observing is the huge trend in the automation world that we are, of course, we are connecting different technologies on systems mm -hmm. like assistance, but we are connecting also a lot of functions in one sensor. And uh, I have today two examples of, of that. The first one is the optical sensors. Which one, okay. Daniel? What do you think? Is the diffuse sensor, retroreflective sensor? I think if we are talking about the same sensor, I have one sensor for all. Yes, that's the idea. That's the sensor of the future. You have one sensor, one housing, with many functions. Here you can decide this will be the diffuse sensor, diffuse with background suppression, uh, retroreflective, true beam, and uh, PNP, NPN, NO, uh, normal open, so normal close. During the ordering, you don't have to define what kind of sensor you would like to buy. You buy only one type of the sensor, and over the programming, you can change a function and you can change the function anytime. Anytime, yeah. You, you can connect it directly to the uh, uh, master uh, network module and then you can rechange everything uh, during the process if, if it's necessary. Yes? I think this is also part of the... It supports uh, maintenance uh, a lot of because you exactly. reduce a lot amount of the parts. Exactly, that, that's the one reason. Uh, you have one sensor on the warehouse and you can put it to the many different applications. But today we are talking, we will, we will tell you something about, uh, we will talk about this in the next uh, webinar about the IO-Link probably. But today we are talking about the condition monitoring. We want about the condition monitoring in such sensors. What possibilities do we have? So I think for me it will be very important to have information about any environment problem. So if I am using, for example, this sensor in some dust environment, can exactly. I detect if I have something on the exactly. front of the sensor? It's a huge problem on the production that, some dust, that the window of the sensor is dirty. We, in some application, we have to put the special air, which is cleaning continuously. Yeah. Yeah, but air is also a cost. If you have air on your factory, you know that you have to pay for the air. It's not for free. and. Uh, we made a great uh, example in one of our customers. He had the production of some uh, gum elements and uh, the small part of the gum will go to the window. And after a few hours, you have to send the guy from the maintenance to clean the sensor. Yeah? But the question is how often I should send somebody to clean the sensor. It depends. Yeah? If I am the... right, without monitoring function, you know when this production was stopped about that. Exactly. You will know it, but when will be too late to exactly. do something? Now you can uh, pre prevent yeah. your, your machines, yes? And you can adjust the time of the, of the prevent. Yeah? So because I have a warning if the level of the light is not good enough. Yeah, yeah. G generally, Perfect. sensor is sending, for example, 100% of light, and, but for, for the sensor is coming back only 16. That's the information is something wrong with the window. Yeah, well, very, it's very, dirty. Yeah, it's, it's easy. So we have very useful information to introduce really preventive uh, maintenance of, of your machine. Yeah, yeah definitely. Another one uh, example of the new approach and creating of uh, some multiplied sensors platform is this one small sensor. Yeah, the, so. 
Very we small. are talking about BCM, so ball of condition, condition monitoring. monitoring sensors. The solution dedicated for, for this type of application, when you have to monitor a lot of information about your machines, which type of, uh, of information? For example, for example, temperature, what more? I think for me it will be interesting vibration with this sensor. Vibration, you have it. Yeah. In three axes, you have the vibration level. So if you put the sensor and the vibration yeah. level is uh, uh, higher than some threshold level, you got the information on the, on the lamp, for example, in our... If it's smaller, then also the color is changing. Uh, it's very interesting function inside this uh, small sensor. Uh, in Europe, we have few ISO norms who are talking about the vibration level on your machines. If you are in the right vibration level, then everything is okay. There is some warning uh, area and of course is the, uh, the, the red area you cannot work uh, with your machines. This sensor can monitor this information and send us alert before something uh, wrong will happen. With this sensor, of course, the interface and how we transmit the data is the IO link. Yes, we are transmitting the information via IO link and of course we can uh, get the information from the sensor and we can reconfigure the sensor uh, during the process. Why is this important? Because this sensor has a lot of functions. It's the vibration, uh, it's humidity, it's the pressure, it's the temperature. Soon will be also available the electromagnetic field uh, measurement in this sensor. There is so much function you cannot collect in one time. So if normal process I need, for example, the information about the vibration in the three axes and the temperature, I'm continuously monitoring and getting this information from the sensor. If one time or two times per day I would like to uh, check, for example, humidity, I can reconnect, reconfigure the, the, the sensor, get the information, and after that, back to the uh, to the standard normal mode, which I using often. Uh, I think what is the very important: uh, most of the data are pre-processed inside of the sensor, so you don't need any special external software to analyze the data out of the sensor. If the vibration is of the right level, or if you have some warning or something like that, you can get out of the data from the sensor. So, like Shimon showed you, if you have some warning the sensor set up or the information sent out over the IOLink interface. But additional, quite often you need some visualization to see the data. So using the latest possibilities for the digitalization, the IOLink and our must, IOLink masters, you can make a nice dashboard when you can show all the data. So all those information about the vibrations, temperature and so on, you can store to some external database for further analyze, for example, to check how behave your machine. And this is really the next step of the maintenance. So, so check behavior of your machine and based on that, you could predict some future behavior. So if something happens, you could predict that in some short time you need to replace some part of the machine. You can connect this sensor with some uh, software, yeah, like an analytic engine, and you can collect this information through the month or years, and you can learn everything about your production, about the condition of your mas machines, and you can prevent uh, Everything. Yeah, yeah can, so you can, can use artificial intelligence to monitor exactly. the data of this. So this is the really great tool to give you the data for really predictive analysis to, to monitor your machine. So this is the latest news for today, mm. uh, this BCM sensor. If you have some questions regarding topics which we presented, don't hesitate to ask. We are now ready for your question. Hi everyone. Thank you, Simon and Daniel, for your introduction to our uh, new sensors and our solution. I am Rafael uh, and I'm happy to answer all your questions. Well, now uh, let's proceed. So uh, the first question was uh, Andrews. I got all on my <laughs> computer. Uh, he asked us, what condition parameters does the power supply provide? Well, let's see. 
the power supply that are able to provide us information via IO-Link, just like those information that we can measure the condition of this uh, of this power supply, these are information like, uh, for example, lifetime. With this parameter, we are able to estimate what time does it take just to go wet with the uh, with the power supply. The other parameters are like load value. That means uh, those are the information. How much current does the power supply actually loads? It's information that allows us to uh, monitor the whole uh, the whole machine and uh, other other parameters are really uh, well described in our manuals. So I introduce you to just check it on our website. Well, okay. Uh, so this was, was the first question. If some of us got something to be clarified, well, I really, I really like to uh, just answer your question. So first, feel free to ask us everything. Uh, oh, the other question is by Carol, Carol Kozniak. Thank you for the question. It about, it's about the vibration visualization tool. Uh, well, just like you saw on the demo, uh, Daniel and uh, Simon provided us. Uh, well, uh, this is a template which allows us to light the smart light. It's a product of us and uh, change the status. It is all done via IO-Link, so the BCM uh, does like the BCM sensor, so the BALUF condition monitoring sensor provides us with IO-Link parameters and process data. And uh, we are able just to grab this information from the uh, masters that are connected to the IO-Link, and we are able to process them. For example, to do this vib uh, vibration visualization done in smart light is actually a kind, kind of simple way. We just get the information, process it, and then send the information to the smart light via PLC. But to do something uh, more sophisticated like that data prediction or maybe some other things, we just need to grab this information and process it via a more sophisticated algorithm. I would recommend to use a data a database. Uh, about the software, well, uh, we don't got a software yet. We are able to make a customized software for you, our clients, among your needs. So if you need a software that will be able to predict some data, to store the data, and then, I don't know, maybe send some uh, information via uh, email, we are able to do it for you. So feel free to contact us. Well, and that's all about your uh, question, Carol. I, <laughs> I would be happy to answer uh, some other questions if you uh, need everything. But let's proceed to Marek's uh, uh, question. He asks, what kind of information does the small condition monitoring sensor provide? Well, uh, just like all IO-Link tools, or maybe the uh, bigger group of it, it provides process and parameter, parameter data. Well, the process data, it is a frame of 20 bytes that are just split into slots. So every slot, the first four slots are able to provide us with process data, just like vibration or everything we want, actually we can program it via parameter data. And the other data are parameter data, just those are asyn asynchronous uh, data. We have to ask the sensor for it. So to uh, grab those data, we just have to ask the sensor to provide us with this data. And the whole amount of the process and parameter data are about 26 parameters. Those are 26 information about the condition of our machine. Those are vibrations, those are vibration velocity, 
vibration accelerator, acceleration, temperature, humidity, if we got the BCM2 is the uh, uh, sensor equipped with humidity sensor and with pressure uh, sensor. And then we are able to, uh, to grab the pre pressure data and magnetic field data coming soon. Well, let's see if someone Ask something more. Ivan asked us, uh, the software for the sensor configuration, is it possible to download from your website? Uh, Ivan, I would like to ask you uh, to write the question, which sensor do you, uh, do you mean? If you ask about all sensors, yet are able to download for our software uh, website, the software, but those are not softwares. If you're asking about uh, IO-Link sensors, we provide you with IODD files. So we are able to connect the sensor to a master and then param uh, parameterize it with the IODD file, which allows you to do it in, in a more quicker way. Everything you need to know are really well uh, implemented in your manual, so I invite you to visit our website. Just write down the name of the sensor you are interested in, download the manual, download the IODD file, and have fun with using the sensor. Okay, I'm gonna just see what uh, other questions you guys got. Let me, give me a minute. Okay, I see how many of you just got a, a lot of questions. So, uh, uh, oh, Robert uh, Gafrov asked us, what is the range of temperature this sensor provides? Uh, the sensor provides, uh, is able to measure temperature from zero to 70 Celsius grade. So you are able just to collect the data and uh, the accuracy of the sensor is about 1.5 uh, uh, Celsius degrees. So uh, that's the information you can get from the sensor. Um, okay, uh, Igor. Ask us, uh, do we have a vibration sensor without the cable, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data transfer? For now on, uh, Igor, thank you for the information, for, for your question. For now on, we got uh, only the sensor which connects with IO-Link. This is the pros of using this uh, sensor because we are able to collect data from a lot of sensors simul simultaneously just, just connecting them to uh, our masters. We got four, eight, or 16 slots masters, so we are able to connect them to the masters. And if you want to uh, approach some uh, wireless connection, I invite you to use maybe Wi-Fi or uh, some, uh, some way just to connect this master to uh, the network, and this way you uh, will be able to grab the data from every place of the world you need. Thank you, Ivan, for your uh, feedback. Okay. Uh, Ryan asked me, hello, how to fasten the BCM on equipment if I won't measure temperature or monitor uh, or motor beam? Well, uh, this sensor got two uh, holes. You are able to fasten it with a screw. We also provide you with a, a holder, a, a magnetic holder. So you are able to uh, attach the magnetic holder onto the machine, then attach the BCM to the magnetic holder. So you are able to change the sensor really fast. It does need uh, some kind of uh, re, uh, remontaging of this all. Uh, equipment you got. Uh, okay, let's proceed. Uh, 
Jan's uh, question is, is there any date, date for availability BCM sensor for check market? Thank you for answer. Uh, well, Jan, uh, I will just check for now on and uh, we will let you know uh, later on because unfortunately I got no information about for it now. Maybe uh, you can ask uh, uh, the, your uh, Czech ball of colleagues. Uh, they will be happy to, happy to answer your question. Okay, I see no one has got any other question. Uh, if you need some, some information about the sensor, just feel free to ask us. Uh, we, are, uh, we are working uh, now for the sake of uh, the health of our uh, employees uh, remotely, but uh, everything's uh, working just like it, uh, it was working before. We got a webshop which is working 24 hours uh, per day and every worker of us will be happy to answer your emails and answer your calls. So uh, thank you for your attention today. Thank you for, for joining uh, our webinar and I'm happy to see you tomorrow on the next webinars uh, that will proceed to the end of this week. Thank you very much.